Boris Johnson, has it ever been an embarrassment to you that you went to Eton? Or has it always been a sort of source of pride, really? I've always been very proud of all my schools. And they all gave me a fantastic amount of, you know, advantage uh, in life. And no, I don't think I don't think I've ever felt remotely disadvantaged. Let's be let's be let's be frank. It's a fantastic education. Yeah, no, I mean the opposite of disadvantage. I mean it is yeah, incredibly no, become, privileged, I, I, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Yeah. And I want you to know, yeah. Steve, that I it was I was state educated. However. Really? For, yeah, well, for a very long time. And also at Eton, <laughs> where I was the beneficiary of a scholarship endowed right. by Henry VI. Yes, indeed. Wasn't I? If yes. that isn't state education, I don't know what is. <laughs> but nonetheless, through whatever means, you got to Eton, which is... I did, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm very proud of my school, and I was very lucky to get there. I'm not convinced that there aren't millions of other people, tens of millions of other people, who aren't equally proud of their schools and, in, in and, may, and may be able to mount a very good case in different ways uh, and may be able to mount a very good case for saying their school was much better than my school. What's I just happen to think, because that was the way we were all taught, to think it was a good school. It was a good school. What's interesting, uh, looking at uh, what people said of you at your time at Eton. What do you mean, what they said of Well, we, we've checked. We've done our research. What do you mean? Yeah. You haven't, what is it all about? Yeah, what yeah. is this? Well, well, a, this I, is your I, school well, life, me, is yeah, Exactly, exactly. Uh, similar sort of things are said of you to this very day, actually. Right. Which is both brilliantly bright, and well, I'll that's, that's throw in a couple of quotes on that front <laughs> to, to, to right, reassure you. Right, but also, uh, you know, he, he's, he was a bit of a showman. They weren't quite sure. I mean, if we've got a quote here. Look at this one from Earl Spencer. Earl Spencer. Uh, who was commented spying on Boris, bumbling about on his first day, and reassured one boy at the school thicker than me. I mean, so he, so there you have the two sort of... Uh, Disgraceful. Were you... Um, what, outrageous, what's, outrageous. What, what's your reaction to the way you were perceived? My theory is this, that I was, I was very deaf as a child. Yeah. And in order to compensate for that, I... I, I, I couldn't hear. I couldn't, couldn't hear. So I had to, I had to feign, a, you know, a certain ignorance of everything. Right. In order not to be caught out, because I was going to be caught out. So it was, it was very important to aim low. Yeah. I'm really interested that you said that you feigned an ignorance of a lot of things. So is well, it? No, no, no. no. Just, it, uh, rather, was my grandmother, who was also yeah. very deaf, used to pretend, you know, not to notice when people asked her things she didn't want to be asked. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. th th that was a. But from school days to. Presenting, have I got news for you? When you appear to be sort of bumbling around, even with that format, that's that's you feigning it, really, is it? That that's the act. No, it's the no, serious-minded no. figure really driving all of this. No, 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 no. What you've got uh, to, well, no, what you've got to, what you've got to bear in mind is that we you know behind the the carefully cultivated veneer of blithering idiot, there is of course a, 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 a blithering idiot of quite a long time, <laughs> and this is very very difficult. And the, 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 it's it's you know. You know how it is. Yeah. Actually, the way the mind works is like this. You have a, in your head, packaging your words, you've got a, and, and processing your thoughts, you've got a great factory of people who are putting things on the conveyor belt, right? And sometimes they have off days and they go on strike and they load the words any old how mm. and they come out all wrong and, and jumbled up. Yeah. And you've got to be prepared for that. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes, you know, you stand up in the House of Commons and you've got... You, you know, you've been sitting about it, you've sitting thinking about it for five minutes, and you've got it absolutely worked out what you're going to say. Sure. And it just and disappears. You see, this is the other side of you. I mean, you, the serious-minded side, has ended up in the House of Commons. You can, you know, from debating at Eton to the House of Commons. That's why when anyone ever asks me about you, not they do very often, I say, oh, the, he's a serious-minded guy. He is a journalist who went into politics, and that's a very serious move to make. And presumably that love of politics started at Eton, did it? Yes, though I was... I, be not, I wasn't very right-wing. I mean, I was, a, I was a pretty pathetic sort of... Apath I was apathetic. Really? I was, a, I was sort of greenish. And I'm afraid to say I flirted with, pathetically with the SDP, who then probably... Or then there's some the other party that disappeared as soon as I got interested in them. <laughs> I can't remember what they But were did called. you join in debates? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was very keen on all that. Yeah. yeah, I was. And, and, and did that get the sort of love of politics going almost as a piece of theatre, partly. The, the, I, I imagine debates at Eton were a bit like they the were. Oxford Union, were they, and things like this. I think the interest in all that began many, many years ago when I was at a school in Brussels. Right. 
and I had a wonderful time in a, a nativity play. No, it wasn't a nativity play. It was a pageant about Noah's Ark. And I was cast in the role of God. And it was absolutely brilliant. And yeah. I remember saying, and I will cause the water to, you know, crush, to, you know, to inundate every creature that creepeth. Right. And all that yeah. sort of stuff. And Power it, at that point. <laughs> I was quite, exactly. <laughs> and I felt, I suppose, like some minister yeah. enacting some yeah. terrible bill yeah, to give more. schools trust status <laughs> or something. Probably I, that's power probably power what it was probably. Well, right. um, you mentioned the Brussels School. I mean, was that when you, be, uh, you, you, of course, as a journalist and as a politician, uh, interested in Europe? Well, did it start then when you were in a school in Brussels? Yes, it did. Yes, mm. I became absolutely fascinated by the whole project to create out of a very diverse set of polities and countries one single state and one union and the school I attended had a plaque in, with an inscription by Jean Monnet saying may they become in mind European may they never go to war again they will go forward from this place with feelings of deep you know, rapture about the European project and all this. And I, I could see the idealism of that, and I, and I still do. I still think it is a high and a noble aim. But I was very interested in the way that at our school in, in Brussels, basically, the English and the Dutch played with uh, them, each other, or possibly a few Danes, because the Danes could also speak English. The French and the Italians might play together, but basically it was the French and the Italians separately. The Germans tended to play on their own, I regret to say. Uh, and that was the way it was. Yeah. It was yeah. absolutely segregated according to language group. Yeah. And this gave me a very profound early insight into the deep problem. Fascinating. How old, how old were you then? I was nine, eight, what ten, an eight nine, ten. to European and politics. Yeah. Oh. And when I then came back to Brussels as a reporter many years later, I found it was exactly the same. Brits would have dinner parties with the Brits. The French would have dinner parties with the French, the Danes would have Danish dinner parties, and they'd all gripe about each other. That playground scene was yeah, being replicated was on, yeah. on a higher yeah. level. Yeah. You went on to uh, another school where your classics teacher, Clive Williams, yeah. credits himself as being responsible for your Clive. love of classics. Yeah, I, owe, I owe a great deal to uh, Clive. Oh, I right. owe a great deal to Clive. He, 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 he was a wonderful teacher and a very, very wonderful guy. And he actually, we're, we're still in regular correspondence. He used to read Rex Warner's translation of Thucydides to us. And I had a student subscription to the Times. I was then about 12, wasn't I? And I was getting ferociously intellectually sort of competitive. And this was the height of the Cold War. Do you remember? This is yeah, an absolutely, absolutely terrifying period when we thought we were all going to get blown up. And I remember Clive reading about Athens and Sparta and just thinking what an incredible analogy it was between Russia and America. And what, you, we, what, 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 what we had, yeah. and what I think needs to be brought back into education, was an absolute ruthless instruction in grammar. Mm. And every morning, we would get up, and before breakfast, we would sing the paradigms of Luo. And we, we, would, we, would, we would sing anti-apo, ek and pro with the genitive, do go, en and siun must have the dative, etc., etc., etc. People don't do that anymore. Well, why not? Because why of, can't we have grammar? Well, well, the theory why is, can't we have right and wrong answers again? The theory why is... Why not? Because it's all bollocks. They're but, all bits. It's no... Time. <laughs> We've got to get back. And all the, I'll teachers, tell you where, all the teachers watching this who are going mad with indignation should know. That you We've got to get back to right and wrong answers okay, and grammar and spelling and punctuation. Let yeah. me put the alternative uh, viewpoint no, here. I'm not yeah. interested in your time. <laughs> you, uh, well, let me ask you a question then. What? You know that the reason I hope, why I hope, some everybody, people, I hope everybody watching this knows that I'm being slightly hyperbolical, but basically but, serious. But, but some would say that you're lucky, because obviously you found all that interesting, did you? I mean, the, the learning, the grammar. So you, you were clearly well, I fascinated find it, I know by I find it. it. No, I, like everybody else, I find it sometimes a pain in the neck. Ah, well, that's why some people argue no, it is, that it, it is, if you do hard, too much of that, turn people off. I remember finding reading, when I learnt to read, I remember, I remember very acutely the struggle of learning to read. And I remember the, the pain of sounding words out and, and not understanding what they meant and how they corresponded to things that people were saying. 
And the point I'm trying to make is it is difficult. These things are not always easy. No. Now, when you were at Eton, there's a sign that you weren't just swatty all the time. This is an interesting thing about the culture of Eton, I guess. You were a member of POP, an exclusive club with bizarre no, no, rituals, no, no, no. I'm told. Uh, bizarre rituals. Well, well, yes. You've described it as an opportunity to swagger around, which Have does I? conjure up a picture of, you know, an elitist club within an elitist school. It was so elite. It was just elitist. It was just sickeningly elite. Was it? Was it? Was it so elite? It was a self-electing elite of almost sickening pomposity and arrogance, belittling disregard for the rest of humanity. Yeah, it was. I mean, well, what can I say about it? It must be wonderful to be part of it. It was good. I tell you, it was good. It was good when we were there because it was self-electing. So the boys would actually elect each other. You see what I mean? And it was a judgment by your contemporaries. Whereas now, and I'm getting terrible trouble saying this, but um, it's more hand picked by the, the authorities. But you know, on the whole elite thing, yeah. uh, you, you know, you're right to identify that as a concept with which a school like Eton does try to associate itself, right? Yes. No question. But I'm not actually against elites. I'm not against elitism. Every society we've ever known. Every society open to our direct observation has been ruled by an elite. Communist Russia, communist China, everywhere is ruled by a very, very tight oligarchy, including, yeah. I'm afraid, New Labour under yeah. Tony, uh, New Britain, Britain under Tony Blair. Yeah. But, but, but the issue is, the issue is, how do you make that elite porous to talent? How do you get people mm. moving up, moving on? Yes. And the trick is to liberate people so that it's not just you know, one school like Eton. But you see, that's where you slightly contradict yourself at the beginning. No, you said you wanted all schools to be like Eton, but by definition, if you have elite schools, they yeah. can't all be like, like well, them. Sure. What I'm saying is, you're going to have elites. You're going to have hierarchies. Of course, you're going to have some people who are better at things than others. That is just the way the human species is, is, yeah. is designed. You just want more people to have but access you want to, to have, the elite. You want to have movement, and you I, want to have people feeling unembarrassed yeah. by trying, unembarrassed by failing. Yeah. We're too we're too freaked out by, by failure yeah. so that we don't encourage success. Does, does it finally, I mean, Eton give you a sense of almost you will fulfill ambition? I think it, no question, it does give you yeah. a ghastly self confidence. Yeah. It really does. And yeah. it, it's worth something that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It yeah. does. I mean, it's also, I mean, it's also. We, I haven't talked about my, my teachers at Eton, but I had some brilliant yeah. teachers. Well, there. I was going to ask you, are heroes, idols from that Well, period? I mean, yes. The best teachers are people you, who, you can walk out of an hour with them, and they can be on any subject in the world, and you, you, you walk out, and for a sort of fully 15, 20 minutes afterwards, you're convinced that the thing you've just been talking about is the key to the universe. You know, there's basically nothing else worth thinking about. Yeah. And there are people like that. I'm sure you know, everybody who has a good teacher knows that feeling. Yeah. And I had people like that at, at Eton and, and, then, and then at Oxford as well. Yeah. So it's yeah. a great gift to be able to, to do that. Yeah. I yeah. was briefly a teacher myself, and I must say I find it extremely difficult to... To inspire in quite well, a way. To keep order. Well, to keep order. <laughs> <laughs> the more basic things. <laughs> Boris Johnson, thank you very my much. Own, my pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah.